Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. This is the fourth episode of story, and it only takes one person to change history. What if a simple act of kindness results in four of Konoha's best friends? Please hit the subscribe and like buttons. Let's get this party started. Zabu Zamamochi was a professional. He killed without remorse or mercy. He did the job with everything he had and rarely failed. When he was hired by Gato, he didn't like the slimy dictator. However, he was paying well so he kept his opinions to himself. His first mission was to kill the bridge builder. He thought it was beneath him so he sent the demon brothers to handle it. When they failed and he was told that Konoha was involved, he was a little more interested. He set up an ambush and confronted the team that was protecting the bridge builder. He was very pleased to fight someone of Kakashi the Sharingan's level. He was impressed with his eyes ability to copy the water clone inside the mist but that's when he got disappointed in the man. He easily fell for his trap and he was now inside his water prison. He created a water clone to deal with the kids. The black haired one rushed his clone and it easily caught him by the neck. He watched as the clone slammed him into the ground and stepped on his chest. The girl was scared shitless but the blonde was doing better. He even tried to stop his teammate from rushing him. He could see his fear but he was controlling it. Zabuza was curious as to what the blonde had planned. It wouldn't have mattered anyway. He watched as he put his hand down on the ground. He was surprised as a ceiling array surrounded him. He turned to the girl and the man, telling them to stay within the array. He guessed that it might have been an attack barrier that was just set up. He then watched as he took out a piece of paper and a nasty looking bomb. He once again did hand seals and created two more arrays. He placed the objects into those arrays and did another set of hand seals. Sealing Jutsu, item transfer Jutsu. He heard him shout. Zabuza chuckled at the stupid name when a few things happened that shocked him. The first was that the brat he had on the ground and Kakashi was now next to him. The second was his water clone was destroyed by an explosion. The final surprise was when he looked at the water prison, that nasty bomb was there and it was glowing. He tried to get away but the explosion caught him. He felt two of the kunai hit him in the arm and waist. Zabuza growled at the injuries and removed the kunai. The wounds were superficial but he was now pissed off at being outsmarted by a freaking kid. He would have to die first. Too bad that Kakashi was now free and ready to fight. He would deal with him first, then the blonde and finally the bridge builder. Naruto sighed as he set the final trap. He was tired and really wanted some ramen. The work would have been finished a long time ago if his team helped. The lazy bastards were probably still sitting in the same spot as before. He pushed them from his mind and just finished securing the perimeter. He was really good at that. He just hoped that it would be enough to stall any one of Zabuza's skill. Naruto entered the home of Tezuna and his family. Tsunami was a very kind woman who was grateful that they had saved her father. Her son, Inari, was a little prick who needed to be kicked in the face. Despite that, he would do all he could to protect them. He turned his attention to the two sitting on the couch. So, is Kakashi-sensei up yet? Naruto asked. I just checked. He's still out from chakra exhaustion, Sakura said. Naruto sighed and scratched his head. Man. I hope he sent a message for backup. I didn't see him use the scroll he took from before. We should have had someone with us if we have to engage another shinobi of Zabuza's caliber. This is no longer a C rank mission, Naruto said. We don't need any help loser. We can handle the level, Sasuke said. Really? This from the guy who had a foot on his chest? Naruto asked mockingly. Sasuke growled and Sakura was about to open her mouth but a look from Naruto stopped her. She then spoke up. It isn't like we could get a message back to Konoha to tell them what happened. Sakura argued. Kakashi can with that scroll. Naruto countered. The small scroll that he took from the gate guards? What does that actually do? Sakura asked. It's a messaging scroll that I created. The sealing methods I put on the scroll allows us to communicate with Konoha, no matter the distance. Remember that day the Anbu came to get me? It was to take me to see the old man and the elders. We tested the ability of the scroll and it works. Naruto explained. Well, what are we waiting on? Get the scroll and send a message, Sakura exclaimed. If I could do that, I would. So would every enemy that Konoha has. I put in a seal that will read the fingerprints and chakra of the person who touches the scroll. Whoever touches it first, is the only one who can use it. Anyone else who tries to use that scroll, the scroll burns up and is destroyed. Naruto explained. Sakura could say nothing about that and did not discuss it. She was about to ask Sasuke his opinion but he was no longer there. Where did Sasuke-kun go? Sakura asked. He probably went somewhere to brood, Naruto said. He turned around and walked back outside, ignoring Sakura's dirty look. 
Meanwhile, Sasuke was just entering the room that Kakashi was laying. He checked to see if he was still out and he was. He made his way over to his things and went through them. It took a short while but he found the scroll that Naruto was talking about. He narrowed his eyes at the scroll and immediately picked it up. It glowed before it caught on fire. Sasuke quickly threw it out the window. He watched it burn instantly and the wind took the ashes away. Sasuke smirked at what he did. He wasn't about to lose this chance to get stronger. He turned around only to see the narrow die of his sensei looking at him. Kakashi was not happy and it showed. Sasuke did not look apologetic. He just walked out of the room to tell everyone that Kakashi was up. Kakashi just sighed and laid his head down. Naruto was really starting to dislike his team. Not only did Kakashi get his scroll destroyed but he finally taught something and he already knew it. The tree climbing exercise was something he learned from the Inuzuka and at the end of the academy. What pissed him off was that Kakashi assigned him to guard duty instead of teaching him the next stage of chakra exercises. He calmed down and worked from his scroll. He was still was working on his wind circle razor and he started to work on a new jutsu. He was interrupted when Tazuna came up to him. Hey kid, it's quitting time, Tazuna said. Naruto rolled up his scroll and fastened it to his back. Tazuna was a little curious about it. What's up with that scroll? I noticed that your two teammates keep looking at it. It was a gift. I mostly put my jutsu notes in it. They look at it because they want my secrets. We're not a tight bunch like the other teams. Don't worry about it. If they try to take or open my scroll, they will be in for a nasty surprise. Anyway, let's get you back home, Naruto said. Yeah. Oh, by the way, thanks for the help. I didn't know that you could make solid clones, Tazuna said. You mean the shadow clone jutsu? Yeah, I learned that from the Hokage. It was an exchange for me teaching him one of my jutsu. I really don't use it as much as my other two clone jutsu but it is an effective jutsu. Naruto explained. Naruto led Tazuna back home through the path that he scouted two days back. As he moved through the path, Naruto stopped Tazuna. He got a bad feeling and summoned three clones. They all pulled out kunai and surrounded Tazuna. Come out, I know that you're there. Not bad kid, protecting the client with a very good move. A voice said. Naruto recognized the voice but he had to make sure. When the tree leaves dance, one shall find flames, Naruto said. The fire's shadow will illuminate the village and once again. Tree leaves shall bud anew. You remember the Hokage's words. The voice said. Two people appeared wearing Konoha uniforms. Naruto recognized them instantly. Raido, Genma, thank Kami that you're our backup. I guess Kakashi Sensei got the request out before he got my scroll destroyed, Naruto said relaxed. The two looked at the blonde before sighing. Naruto was confused by their look. We need to talk to your Sensei Naruto, Genma said. So, am I in trouble? Kakashi asked jokingly. He was seated with his team to the right of him. He gave them a brief glance and saw that Naruto was not happy. When Raido and Genma came with him and Tazuna, he knew that things were not looking up. The two explained why they were here and demanded to know why he did not reply to the messages that were sent by the Hokage. Kakashi did give a good excuse, fighting with Zabuza, but the two expressed how the Sandaime was not happy. There will be a review when you get back to the village Kakashi. It isn't just the Hokage you will be facing. The elders are not happy as well. We know the real reason why, Genma said, looking at Naruto first and Sasuke second. Kakashi could see that Sasuke was a little offended by being looked at second. Kakashi was just happy he did not say anything. What I'm curious about is how did you get the scroll destroyed? There is only one way that could happen. Did Zabuza reach for it? Raido asked. Yes, I was careless with it. He touched the scroll and it burned up. He looked at Naruto. I'm really sorry about that, he said. Naruto just scoffed and turned his nose up at him. Kakashi sighed at the attitude he was getting from the blonde. He turned his attention back to his comrade. So what are you two going to do? Are you our backup? In a sense. We are going to make our way to the daimyo's palace. We are to observe him and see if he's on Gato's payroll or not. The fact that he has allowed this to happen is suspicious. Raido explained. Well, I hope that you hurry. I could use the help against Zabuza when he returns. He will be more prepared to fight us, Kakashi said. Yeah, next time don't jump into his element, Genma said with mirth. Kakashi looked annoyed by him saying that. That meant that Naruto told them everything. With that done, the two left to start their mission. The Janan got up to leave but Kakashi told Naruto to stay. The other two seemed to smirk at that but it didn't bother Naruto. Now alone, the two faced each other. Naruto, 
I don't know how many times you want me to say it but I am sorry. How long are you going to keep up this hostile attitude? Kakashi asked. So, I'm the problem? Naruto asked with a tone. I'm not saying that but you are not helping matters. It is as if you don't respect me or your teammates, Kakashi said. Because I don't. I'll never respect my teammates and that's just the way things are going to be. You, I don't respect your decision making. From what everyone tells me, you're a well-known former Anbu who is known for his field actions. This mission has just shown me that maybe you aren't cut out to lead Janan, Naruto stated. Kakashi narrowed his lone eye at him. The blonde did not flinch at it. After looking at each other, Kakashi was the first to speak. Very well, however, at least try to work with us. Perhaps you will be surprised, Kakashi said. Doubt it, Naruto said and walked away. Kakashi sighed and raked his hand through his hair. He hoped that this mission did not get any worse. Sakura made her way up to the room where the boys were sleeping. It was morning and she had just finished working on her chakra control. She would change shifts with Naruto in an hour but she had a different mission today. That idiot Naruto left his large scroll and she was going to get it. She felt that if she got the scroll for Sasuke, then he was be appreciative to take her out on a date. Also, Naruto was getting a little too full of himself. She found the scroll in the corner and made her way over to it. She figured that the only reason it hurt Sasuke was that it was close to Naruto's body. With it away, she felt that the scroll's defensive measures would not work. She made her way over to the scroll and reached out. As she touched the scroll, a small barrier appeared. It covered half of her arm and she got the biggest shock in her life. The electricity burned her arm badly. Sakura screamed in pain and moved away from the scroll. She clutched her arm and cried out. The first to arrive was Tsunami. The second was Kakashi. He saw Tsunami check on Sakura's arm. That's when he noticed the electric discharge coming from the scroll. Kakashi put together what happened quickly and was very annoyed. Things just got worse. Kakashi stepped into the house after talking with Inari. He had to talk to him after Naruto exploded on the boy. Granted, Inari started it and said the wrong thing to Naruto. Despite finding people who cared for him, Naruto still kept his past close to the vest. However, he couldn't help but be glad at the opportunity that the situation presented him. With Naruto out of the house, he could finally confront his other two students. He looked to see Sasuke and Sakura seated on the couch. Sakura was now sporting a long sleeve top to hide the burns she got from her attempt at Naruto's scroll. Lucky for him, Naruto was not really curious about it. He knew that someone attempted to grab his scroll from the smirk that he gave his two teammates. He even made a mocking comment to Sasuke about a shocking experience. He did ask about Sakura's new clothes but she just angrily told him to mind his business. Kakashi looked at the two with a serious eye, which made Sakura flinch and Sasuke indifferent. What were you two thinking? Kakashi asked seriously. Sensei, Sakura began but was stopped by Kakashi raising his hand to stop her. Let me tell you what you were thinking. Kakashi turned to Sasuke. You were thinking that you didn't want anyone to stop you from getting stronger. He then turned to Sakura. You thought that you would impress Sasuke if you gave him Naruto's scroll. Am I right so far? He demanded. So what? This is our mission. We could have handled it. Sasuke argued. You are not a commander Sasuke. You are a Janan and you are to respect your commander's authority. I don't care if you are the top of you class, your actions of destroying the scroll shows that you are not a top ninja, Kakashi stated harshly. Sakura was surprised at this. You destroyed the scroll Sasuke-kun? Sakura asked with surprise. Sasuke just growled and turned his head away. Kakashi then faced Sakura. You aren't any better. Just because your crush is jealous of his teammate's skill does not give you the right to take his abilities. Naruto worked hard for that and you are being disrespectful by trying to take it, Kakashi said. Sakura looked at her feet in shame. The man, sighed at them. Do you realize that we are considered the worst team among the graduates? I took this mission so that I could show that we are a well-oiled team. Now I see that was a mistake. After completing this mission, do not expect another until this team starts to act like a team. With that Kakashi walked away to do something. Sasuke quickly stood and made his way outside to do something to quell his frustrations. Sakura was just left alone. Naruto was getting annoyed as he felt someone shake him. He slapped the hand away and turned back to his sleep but the hand was persistent. He opened his eyes and saw a beautiful face looking down at him. He blinked a few times before shooting up. The person who was looking at him moved just in time as he rolled away from them. They watched as he got into a defensive stance. Naruto looked around for anyone else. Who are you? Naruto demanded. The person just smiled at him. 
I'm sorry. I didn't mean to startle you. My name is Haku and I was just out here to gather herbs. I was just concerned because this not a place for you to be asleep. With Gato's men and wild animals, you could have been hurt, Haku said. Naruto looked at her and did notice the basket with herbs in it. Naruto relaxed a little but did not really drop his guard. Sorry about that. I'm just a little on edge, Naruto said. It's all right. You are a ninja after all, Haku said. Naruto looked at her with suspicion until she pointed to her forehead. Naruto realized what she was pointing at and blushed. This made Haku giggle at that. That's when Haku looked around and saw the damage. Were you training? Yeah, secret training. Can't really tell you civilians. Did the person that you're gathering the herb for suffer some kind of burns? Haku looked surprised at that. I have a comrade back in my village who is pretty good at health. She makes these creams that works wonders. I kind of brought some from her in bulk due to some jutsu, Naruto said with a laugh. Your friend sounds skilled in the arts. Perhaps after my friend is healed, I may go to your village and compare notes, Haku said. I was wondering something. By the look of the area, you are very strong. Why do you keep training if you are already so strong? Well, I want to be Hokage one day so I have to get stronger. I also have friends who I want to protect and keep safe, Naruto said. This made Haku smile. That's a very good reason. I believe that when some has something that they want to protect, they can become stronger than ever, Haku said. You think so? He asked. I do believe that. I think that you will be very strong Naruto, Haku said with a smile. Naruto couldn't help blush at the smile. Thanks for that Haku-chan, Naruto said. Haku just smiled before turning to leave. Before Haku left, she turned around to face Naruto. By the way, I'm a boy, not a girl. With that he walked away. He had a smirk on his face and wondered what the expression on Naruto's face was. It was probably funny. Naruto just had a dead look in his eyes at that revelation. That just isn't possible. No guy is that pretty. His mind shouted. He would remain like this until Sasuke came for him. Kakashi was starting to get his strength back. It would not be long until he was at full strength. That would also mean that Zabuza would be at full strength as well. He would be prepared this time. He just wondered if his team would be ready. With Sasuke now mastering the tree climbing exercise, he pushed him a little to be ready. He did the same with Sakura but it was on a smaller scale. He really didn't have too much interaction with Naruto but that was not his fault. The blonde decided that his time would be better spent training alone. Kakashi sighed at that. It seemed that the gap between Naruto and the team was just growing wider. He only hoped that he could come to a solution before things got worse. That's when his attention was taken away by the falling of a tree. He told Sasuke to watch the family while he observed. He arrived to see Naruto with a green disc in his hand. He watched as he tossed the thing and it still kept its shape. It cut through another tree and it quickly fell. That's when he heard Naruto curse a little. Man, Iruka-sensei was right. It is inaccurate, Naruto said. It doesn't look inaccurate to me, Kakashi said, startling Naruto. That's an impressive jutsu Naruto. Yeah but it's far from battle ready. Why are you here? Shouldn't you be training Sasuke or something? Naruto asked with a little tone. Seeing how you told me that you wish to train alone, you can't really blame me, Kakashi said. Well, I can't trust my teammate and I don't respect my sensei. See it from my view. Naruto argued. Naruto, I know that you have had some issues with us and I have done nothing about it. I am trying to change that. At least give me a chance to prove it, Kakashi said. Naruto gave him a look and folded his arms. He would stare at Kakashi for a time before scoffing. All right, I'll give you a chance but it will be small one. As for the others, you can forget it, Naruto said and walked off to the house. While it was not what he expected but it was a start. Kakashi followed the blonde back. Naruto woke up very tired. He had really pushed himself yesterday training. He was also burning the midnight only getting his new ideas for his new jutsu and his scroll. He gave a yawn before looking around the room. He wondered where Kakashi and Sasuke was. He got up and found out that Sakura was also gone. It took him a while before he realized that they must have went to the bridge without him. Naruto quickly got dressed and was about to go when he heard an inhumane scream. He came downstairs to see Tsunami and Inari in the living room. He told the two to stay here before he went to check out the source of that scream. He secured the door and left two shadow clones. He made his way to the sound carefully. When he got there, he felt a little sick. There were two men on the ground and bloody. The one wearing the skull cap was littered with kunai. Lucky for him, he would survive as they did not hit any vital areas. The tattooed man however, 
Naruto knew that he would not survive. His leg was completely blown off and was bleeding out. The two men saw Naruto standing there. While the skull cap man was disabled, the tattoo man was making a move for his katana. Naruto snapped out of his funk and quickly stopped him. He took both katana and sealed them. He then decided to take the skull capped man away and secure him. The man with the tattoos screamed out to him but Naruto ignored him. It was cruel but Naruto could do nothing for him. After securing the swordsman and getting the two to safety, Naruto made his way to the bridge. He arrived just to see what was going on, which was nothing. The mist was thick and he could see no one. He could hear the sounds of battle but he could not pinpoint where everyone was. He needed to take care of that mist. Lucky for him, he had a jutsu for that. He summoned a bunch of shadow clones and had them move into several positions. He gave out some orders before he made his way to the end of the mist. He did some hand seals. Wind style, great breakthrough, Naruto shouted and left out a gust of wind. It was not a strong wind as he only wanted to get rid of the mist. The mist was blown away and now he could see everything. Kakashi was battling Zabuza and Sasuke was getting his ass handed to him by the fake hunter Nin. Naruto was quick to act. He gave a signal and his clones jumped out, each with a green disc. They launched the disc at the Dome of Mirrors. The disc easily destroyed the mirrors, cutting them in two. The hunter Nin escaped before being killed. Two clones grabbed Sasuke and took him away while the others attacked the hunter ninja. The teenager was have some time fighting the clones as they were coordinating well with each other. Still, the hunter ninja was able to dispel them with Senbone. Naruto tried to rush up on him but he was caught and slammed to the ground. The hunter ninja stabbed a Senbone in his neck only to have Naruto burst in the flames. The hunter ninja got burned in the arms and screamed in pain. So focused on the pain, he did not see Naruto come from behind to knock him out. The mask fell off and the person hit the ground hard. Naruto pulled out some wire to tie him up when he got a look at the face. Haku? The battle on the bridge was over. With Haku out cold and secured, Kakashi ended the life of Zabu Zamamochi with his signature jutsu. The problems did not end when Gato arrived with his army of thugs. He left at Zabuza and was about to send his men after Tazna. Naruto acted and summoned over a hundred shadow clones. They were each armed and ready to fight. That's when the villagers came. Rallied, by Inari, they were ready to fight for their villager. Gato was enraged and wanted everyone to suffer. That was when Raido and Genma arrived with the wave's forces. Gato was surprised by this and realized that he was outnumbered. He quickly tried to escape but he was stopped by the three forces. He and any bandit that didn't escape was quickly captured and restrained. Gato was dragged away, kicking and screaming, getting punched in the face by the villagers. Everyone went back to Tazana's house where Raido and Genma dealt with the two bodies, one which was dead. Naruto was feeling real bad about that but Kakashi was surprisingly there for him as this was his first kill. However, it was time to deal with the issue in front of them. That issue was Haku. Why don't we just kill him? Sasuke said with a tone. We aren't killing him just because you feel slighted, Raido said. Sasuke glared at him and then at Haku. Naruto also looked at Haku. He could see that his eyes was dead. Naruto knew the reason why as he knows about Zabuza's death. I think we should take him back with us. Naruto said. Why should we? He and his master just tried to kill us and Tazana's family, Sakura said. He's not a killer. That's just not in him. I just have a gut feeling that we should take him with us, Naruto said. We're not taking him just because of your gut. Sakura argued. Why are you even talking Sakura? What did you do for this whole mission? Just shut up and sit back down and let those with real skill talk, Naruto spat. Sakura was red in the face. Before she could do anything, Kakashi spoke. Very well, we will take him back to Konoha, Kakashi said. Sakura and Sasuke looked at him in surprise. However, he is your responsibility Naruto. You seem to have some type of connection. Thanks Sensei. With that, all talks were done. The Konoha team, plus one, were waving goodbye to the villagers of the wave country. They were very thankful for all their help and gave them a hero's farewell. They began their trek home. During the trip, Naruto kept watch over Haku. The teenager was not speaking to anyone but he was cooperative with the young blonde. He ate and drank when he was given. He did not try to escape at all. Naruto didn't know what to say to Haku but he was coming up with something. When the team stopped for the night, Naruto decided to do something. Sitting near the water, Naruto approached Haku. He gave him some food and sat down in front of him. As the two ate, Naruto began to speak. Listen Haku. I know that you might be mad at us about killing Zabuza and that you don't want to talk. Naruto began but Haku cut him off. I am not angry at you or your team Naruto. 
We were enemies at the time. It is the way of the shinobi world that we live in. I know that you understand this, Haku said. Yeah, it was. Eye opening. So, what are you mad about? Naruto asked. I am mad at myself. I was Zabuza's tool and I failed him. I lost to someone who was a better shinobi than me. I could not kill my kindness and finish off your team to help him. It is because of this that he died. I am ashamed of myself because he saved me from death and gave me reason. Haku explained. Are you talking about the bloodline killings? We read about it in the academy, Naruto said. Haku was surprised but smiled at him. Yes. My father found out that I had the ice-style bloodline. He and a mob killed my mother and would have killed me if my abilities did not save me. I lived on the streets for a while before I was found by Zabuza. He used my abilities for himself but I did not mind. He found a place for me at his side. I was happy to be his tool. Naruto looked at him with sympathy. While he didn't like the way Haku called himself a tool, he could understand wanting to belong. He wanted that feeling for so long and was very happy to retrieve it. Haku saw the look and smiled. You have experienced something similar. You have also found people that has given you a purpose. I am happy for you. That is why I am sorry about what will happen when we arrive to your village, Haku said. What are you talking about? Naruto asked. When we arrive, I am going to ask your Hokage to kill me. Haku answered. Naruto looked at him with shock. I attacked Konoha Shinobi and I attempted to kill the last Uchiha. They will want my head and I will give it to them. No, 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 you can't do that. You can't just ask for death, Naruto exclaimed. Naruto, Haku called out, gaining his attention. He smiled at the blonde. I wish that we could have met under a different situation. We could have been great friends. However, I failed my master. I deserve nothing but death for my failure. Naruto could not accept that. He couldn't just let him kill himself. He was running through his head to find something to keep him from going through with his idea. That's when something came to his head. Tell me something. Zabuza was loyal to the Mizukage right? What would make him just forget that loyalty? I know that things were bad in Karangakura but he is the reason that the Mizukage had to stop that academy graduation right? Zabuza must have told you right? Naruto asked. Haka looked at Naruto with confusion before speaking. Zabuza was not really loyal. The only reason he was even on Yagura's side was because he gave him the Executioner's Blade. However, Yagura changed after an attack years ago. A lot of people came to the conclusion that he was being controlled by someone but that was never confirmed. I would like to think that Zabuza attempted the coup because of that. I really have no idea. Haku explained. Well then, as Zabuza's friend, don't you think that it is your duty to complete his objective? Naruto asked seriously. Haku was taken back by that. You said it yourself. Your purpose was Zabuza's purpose. It is up to you to complete that purpose as his friend. Are you really going to fail him twice? It was now Haku's turn to think. He never really thought about that. He did feel that Naruto had a point and was seriously thinking about it. Naruto saw this and smiled. Raito and Genma also watched and were impressed with Naruto. For the rest of the trip, Haku was much more talkative. It was mostly with Naruto due to the fact that the other two wanted nothing to do with him. Haku and Naruto were talking about their lives and were becoming really good friends. They arrived in the village and made their way to the Hokage Tower. Once inside, they were met with the Hokage and his elders. Kakashi could see that they were not happy but kept a straight face. All three Jonin gave their reports to the Hokage and the elders. Kakashi watched as the Hokage's face as it got sterner with every report. When it was over, Hiruzen looked at everyone in the room. Thank you for your reports. Team Kakashi, you are dismissed with the exception of your sensei. Haku, we will talk more but I must ask you to wait outside. Two of my Anbu will be with you, he said. Haku Boden was escorted outside with the Janan team and the other two Jonin. Once alone, all three turned their eyes on him. Kakashi felt really nervous. I am not pleased Kakashi. I understand sir. I know that I have failed, Kakashi said with authority. Spectacularly. You did not answer our call. You continued the mission knowing that the difficulty had increased. You refused to call for backup and the worst thing is that you got an important piece of equipment destroyed due to your incompetence. Have I left anything out? Koharu asked with a stern tone. No but in my defense, everything worked out okay, Kakashi said. Do not be so laid back Kakashi. You needlessly put your team in danger. What is the most embarrassing thing is that Ajanan was making better decisions than a war veteran, Homura said with distaste. Kakashi did not say anything and stood at attention. What really happened to the scroll Kakashi? Hiruzen asked. 
Kakashi looked at his leader with confusion but it only made the old man glare at him. Sasuke made a foolish decision. It was a moment of stupidity, he said. Are you really defending his actions? I made the same mistake with my team and look what happened, Hiruzen stated. I can understand why you favor the Uchiha but it seems that you have done so and lost the respect of your other. I was lucky that Jiraiya doesn't hold a grudge. Naruto might be different. It would also be in your best interest to deal with Sasuke's attitude about Naruto or I will be forced to. I will deal with it sir, Kakashi said. See that you do, Hiruzen said. After a moment of silence, he spoke again. I am very disappointed in you Kakashi. When you pass this team, I thought that you would do your best in training them. I see now that you have favored one over the others. Your team is not a team and the future that I see is not a good one. You either get them in shape or I will find someone who can. Kakashi straightened up after that ultimatum. You are dismissed Jonin. With that said, Kakashi used the teleportation jutsu to leave. After he was gone, the two Anbu entered the room with Haku. So, you're Haku. You were Zabuza's accomplice? Naruto said friend, refusing to call you a tool, Hiruzen said with amusement. Naruto is a good friend. In the short time, I have come to respect him, Haku said. Good. While you are not a registered shinobi, you did help Zabuza. We are very aware of his reputation and actions. It was reported that you tend to immobilize rather than kill. However, that does not excuse your part. Why should I not put you in prison for the rest of your life? Hiruzen asked. I do not have any reason Hokage. I did help my master in everything that he did. If it is your decision, I will not fight it. However, Naruto has given me. A purpose. I must complete this purpose not just for me but for Zabuza as well. I was his friend and I have to see it through. I will take any punishment but I must return to the hidden mist village, Haku said. Hiruzen looked at the teenager with a critical eye. After an intense stare down, Hiruzen smiled. I see that you are determined. I will consult with my council and we will have a decision. In the meantime, you will be shadowed by my Anbu and we will put you up somewhere comfortable, he said. Thank you sir. With that, Haku was led out by the Anbu. Hiruzen just sighed and hoped that Kakashi got things together, for him and his team. Naruto was on his way to see Iruka. He knew that he was probably still at the academy as he liked to work from there. He would go to him because he was pretty honest with him when it came to his ideas. He made a lot of notes in the wave country and there were a look of theories he had. Iruka could help him sort it out and tell him what worked and what wouldn't. As he closed into the academy, he was suddenly cut off by Sasuke. Naruto was surprised but it quickly changed when he saw him. He wasn't exactly happy to see him. He figured out that Sakura was the one who tried to take his scroll. It wasn't hard when he saw the bandages on her arm. He thought that it was Sasuke who might have put her up to it but he quickly squashed that. Sakura probably did it herself. Either way, he wondered why he was standing in front of him now. Can I help you with something? Naruto asked with a tone. Sasuke ignored it and spoke. I need you to create a jutsu for me, Sasuke said. Excuse me? You heard me. You like to create jutsu, so make one for me. Naruto looked at him with stunned eyes. Naruto suddenly began to laugh. That action made Sasuke look at him with surprise. When Naruto was still laughing, Sasuke got very angry. What is so funny? Naruto stopped laughing and looked at him. Oh man, that was funny, Naruto said, wiping tears from his eyes. Well, let me say this as clearly as possible. Hell no, I won't make you a jutsu. Why not? Sasuke snarled demandingly. First of all, you didn't ask for my help, you demanded my help. I don't know who you think you are but you don't demand anything from me. I'm not Kakashi or anybody else who kissing your ass. Number 2, why should do anything for you? You have tried to steal from me and you've been spying on my training sessions with Aviki and Iruka, Naruto said, surprising Sasuke. Oh yeah, they let me know about that. I don't know why you're so concerned with one of the losers and his jutsu but that's your issue. However, I'm not going to help you or do anything for you. You want a jutsu, go to Kakashi. Sasuke was steaming at the words that were said to him. While he would never admit it, he did enjoy the fact that he was favored by the village. It did help his ego a bit. To have someone just dismiss him, he did not enjoy it. Sasuke then calmed himself down before scoffing at Naruto. He walked past Naruto, bumping his shoulder as he did. Sasuke then looked at Naruto. Fine, you can keep your stupid jutsu. Not like it's going to matter when I unlock my bloodline, Sasuke said with a smirk. Naruto narrowed his eyes at what Sasuke said. The Uchiha walked away and Naruto gave his back a dirty look. 
It seemed like he would speak to Iruka later. If Sasuke thought he was going to steal his jutsu, that guy had another thing coming. He turned and made his way to see Andy Tsume. Kakashi looked at the memorial stone with a frustrated glance. He was not happy with the Hokage's decision. Yes, he messed up. The mission was not what it was supposed to be. His team was supposed to come together and be a team. However, it turned into a disaster. They did not come together as a team like he wanted. He also got in trouble for not replying to the Hokage. That was something that he blamed Sasuke for. It also did not help when his fellow Jonin berated him in front of his team. Kakashi needed to turn this around and fast. He was not going to be the first Jonin to ever lose his command. He was going to shape up his team or die trying. It was time to stop being nice to his team. It was time for some tough love. Tsume looked at Naruto with surprise. She had just listened to what Naruto had explained to her. She was both shocked and a little angry. To think that the Uchiha was so arrogant to even threaten to steal Naruto's jutsu was something. Tsume knew about the issues with Naruto and his teammates. It wasn't just from Kiba who she heard from. She also spoke with Aviki who helped out Naruto from time to time. From what he knew, Kakashi did not run a tight ship. She knew that he did not discipline the Uchiha. Tsume was now regretting not fighting harder to get Naruto on another team. It seemed that she was right about Kakashi's focus. Lucky for Naruto, he had other avenues that he could go to. After her thoughts, she turned to look at Naruto. Well, I can talk to Murakumo for you. She is one of our dog trainers and she has a personal training ground which she uses to train them. I'll talk to her and ask her to allow you to use the grounds to train. However, I don't think that you have to worry. If Sasuke ever went through with that threat, he would face consequences that would be really severe, Tsume said. What do you mean? Naruto asked. It was before my time but during the reign of the second Hokage, he had to deal with a similar problem with the Uchiha clan. The Uchiha was dealt with but many shinobi were not happy with the clan. A law was put in the Konoha Charter that if any Uchiha was to use the Sharingan to steal anyone's skills, they would be subject to heavy penalties. Tsume explained. What type of penalties? It could be from suspension from duty to banishment with their Sharingan sealed. The charter is very clear. I'll still talk to Murakumo for you but if that Uchiha gets in your face again just remind him of that. It will shut him right up, Tsume said. Naruto gave her a big smile before giving her a hug. You're the best Andy Tsume, he said. I know. I'm awesome. A week later found Kakashi at the training grounds. His face was in his book as he was waiting for his team to come back from their punishment. Two days of rest ended when a late but serious Kakashi arrived to the training ground. He immediately berated his team for what happened in the wave country and that things were about to change. The first change that was immediate was that Kakashi implemented punishment. If they would not work together, then he punished them together. The punishment was always something physical that ranged from laps to push-ups. Kakashi looked up from his book to see Naruto come into his view. He was always the first to finish because he was always the one with the most stamina. He was quickly followed by Sasuke who had to take some deep breaths. After a long moment, Sakura came in and dropped to her face in fatigue. Kakashi just sighed as he looked at his team. Well, did you have a nice run? Kakashi asked. All he got was a glare from Naruto and Sasuke. You can be angry all you want but I told you a week ago that this would happen. Oh yeah, now you're acting like an authority. Naruto muttered as he got his wind back. Kakashi just looked at him and did not comment. I've. Had. Enough. Sakura muttered from her position. Kakashi turned to see Sakura struggling to stand. She faced her sensei with a glare. It is not mine's or Sasuke's fault that Naruto won't work with us. The blame is not Naruto's. The exercise was a simple trust fall, which you refused to do because I paired you with Naruto. You are to blame for this. I told you all that if you refuse to act like a team, then I will punish you as a team, Kakashi stated. This made Naruto softly scoff but Kakashi heard it. I also do not appreciate your scoffs Naruto. I am trying to do better. He turned back to his team. You can rest for five minutes before we continue. With that, Kakashi vanished. It did not take long for Sakura to turn on Naruto. See what you have done? You've made Kakashi sensei mad, Sakura stated. Like I care if he's angry. He can try all he wants but my opinion isn't going to change, Naruto said. God, you are just so annoying. You're the main reason that me and Sasuke are suffering, she spat. Again, like I care, he said. Naruto ignored her and started to stretch. Sakura was steaming at being ignored by the blonde. She then turned to Sasuke. Sasuke-kun, say something, she said. You're annoying, 
Sasuke stated, stunning Sakura. You are also an embarrassment as a kunoichi. Sasuke, Sakura said sadly and softly. I don't even know why you're a ninja in the first place. What do you really contribute to the team? You have no skills, you barely train and you don't come from any type of shinobi background. You're useless, just like you were back in the wave country. Just do us all a favor and quit, Sasuke said harshly. Sakura could not say anything. Her feelings were really hurt and tears began to form up in her eyes. Sasuke scoffed at Sakura and turned away only to see Naruto give him a dirty look. You got something to say loser? He asked. You know, you've got to be the worst human being alive on this earth. You think that you're this spectacular shinobi but you're not. You're a bitter little boy who believes that everyone is below him just because he is a Chiha blood. It didn't matter to Zabuza and it did matter to Haku when they both laid into your ass, Naruto stated. Sasuke growled at that. If I had my Sharingan, I would have defeated them both, Sasuke shouted. I doubt that and I doubt that you would have made a difference even with your Sharingan. You don't seem to realize that by yourself, they would have killed you. Who saved your ass in the wave country when Haku had you on the ground? You might think that you don't need us but without me, without Sakura, you would have been dead. So, get off your damn high horse Sasuke. You're not any better than her or anyone else, Naruto said. Sasuke was clenching his fists at the words Naruto said. The look Naruto gave almost dared him to do something. That's when Kakashi returned. He looked at the scene before him and sighed. Why did his team have to be so difficult? Kakashi wasn't the only team having issues. Asuma looked at his team and could feel the tension. While it wasn't his whole team, he could see that problem between Ino and Shikamaru. He knew why it was happening but he decided to stay out of it. It was an issue that they would have to handle by themselves. Okay team, we're done for today. Meet back here at the same time, Asuma said. They all nodded and Asuma vanished. Choji turned to Shikamaru. So, are we meeting up later today? Choji asked. Maybe. I'm working on this new barrier that Iruka gave me. My dad thinks that it would be a good idea to learn. After I learn this, I can cut up with some ideas. Shikamaru explained. Okay then, we can hang out tomorrow. See you later. Choji said after bumping fists with him. Choji left the field and after some time, Shikamaru turned his attention to Ino. She was looking at him with annoyance and he did not want to deal with this any more than he could. With a sigh, he faced the annoyed girl. You got something to say? Shikamaru asked. I want to know why you're treating me like an annoyance, Ino demanded. It's because you are an annoyance. Is there anything else? He asked. This made Ino mad. You don't get to talk to me like that, she shouted. Damn you're loud and troublesome. If you're just going to yell at me for ignoring you and calling you annoying, I'm going home to work on my jutsu, Shikamaru said and turned to walk off. Ino was not happy about this and wondered why Shikamaru was treating her like this. That's when she remembered something that happened five days ago. Is this about me not going to Choji's promotion test? Ino asked, making Shikamaru stop. Are you still angry at me about not being there? You're being a big baby about something that happened five days ago. I apologized for my absence and Choji has already accepted it. Because it is something that you counted on and your mother told you to do. You didn't have anything important to do like you told us. You were sitting in an empty store, flipping through a magazine. If it was any other person, they would have scoffed at you and never accepted your apology. Oh, you can't say you apologize sincerely when it took you three days to do it, Shikamaru stated. So what are you saying Shikamaru? Am I a bad friend? Ino said with a tone. Yes. Shikamaru said plainly, shocking Ino. You might think otherwise but the proof is right in front of you. You did it to Sakura over Sasuke. Choji does not expect much but the least you could have done is be there for a moment in his life that he was really proud of. It highlights just how shallow of a person you are in that you don't value friendships as much as you say. With that Shikamaru turned around and walked away. It would be a while before Ino found her voice but Shikamaru was already gone. The blonde was stewing in anger at what Shikamaru just said to her. With a huff, she stormed off in the other direction to cool off. Asuma watched from his hidden spot. In truth, he agreed with Shikamaru's statement. He was there for Choji's promotion test. He was happy for the plump boy's success. He also saw the disappointment in his face when Ino was not there. He knew that Noriko was not happy with her daughter for blowing off Choji's big day. Choji did forgive her but Asuma was disappointed in her as was Shikamaru. He could only hope that things did not escalate any more than they did. Kakashi dismissed his team for the day after a few missions. Sasuke was quick to leave as he was still angry about the words that was said to him. Kakashi soon left, probably to talk down the Uchiha. 
Naruto was about to leave as well but someone stopped him. Ah, uh, Naruto, can you stay for a minute? Sakura asked. Naruto turned around and noticed her meek demeanor. She looked nervous but Naruto stood and waited. After a while, she spoke. Thank you for sticking up for me. I know that you don't really like me. I didn't really do it to defend you Sakura. I did it because Sasuke needed to be knocked down a peg, Naruto said. Oh, Sakura said sadly. Naruto noticed this and felt a little bad. Look Sakura, I don't agree that you should quit but I think that you aren't taking this seriously. I think that if you took your Kunoichi career a little more serious, the Sasuke wouldn't attack you like he did. Maybe Kakashi would take you more serious too. I have my doubts but you never know, Naruto said. Sakura seemed to be thinking about what Naruto said. Do you have any advice on how to start? She asked. I would talk to Iruga. He's pretty honest when it comes to explaining things. He might even give you a direction to go. Naruto answered. Sakura nodded at that and turned to leave. Before she did, she faced Naruto again. Thanks Naruto, I mean it, Sakura said and ran off. Naruto just smirked and walked off. He felt that he did something good today. He figured that he deserved a bowl of ramen for a reward. An explosion rocked the area. Kurinai, Hinata and Shino had to cover their eyes from the dust that was slowly settling. They all looked after it settled to see the damage that was created. Kurinai looked on with wide eyes at the size of hole that was in large boulder. She was just surprised because this was the first attempt of a new jutsu for Kiba. She turned her attention to Kiba Wood was resting on the ground. She could see a smile on his face but it was quickly changed into pain as he was rubbing his hands. Hinata was checking his hands as Akamaru hopped on his lap. Kurinai just looked at her student with some pride. If Kiba got his new jutsu down, he was going to be a force to be reckoned with. That she was sure of. Sakura had just finished some laps. It was something she did willingly. That's when she walked up to Kakashi, who was reading his book. She saw that he saw her but it did not stop her. She opened her mouth only to be cut off by Kakashi. The answer is still no Sakura, he said, making her frown. A month ago, Sakura took Naruto's advice and went to speak with Iruga. Her former instructor was not kind when it came to telling her the truth. It depressed her somewhat. That's when Iruga picked her up. He said that she had the best chakra control of the class and she had very deceptive strength. Sakura blushed because of the punches she hit Naruto with. He recommended that she worked on her basics while focusing on Genjutsu, Taijutsu and the medical arts. The next day, she expressed her wish to learn these things to Kakashi. He was quite proud and handed her two scrolls, one on Genjutsu and another on first aid. It didn't take her long to learn everything on the two scrolls. Sakura then asked to learn a jutsu or apply which she read. Kakashi told her to just keep reviewing those scrolls. Sakura didn't complain at first but she was starting to wonder if Kakashi did not want her to get stronger. Why not sensei? I understand the need to review but how can I show my improvement if you won't let me? Sakura argued. Sakura, right now you are at the beginning stage of improving. You shouldn't rush things because it can lead to injuries to you and those trying to help you. Trust me, I know that you are working hard. Just keep reviewing those scrolls and soon, we can move on to jutsu. Kakashi explained with an eye smile. Sakura looked at him for a while before frowning. You know, I used to think that Naruto was just being childish in his opinion of you. Now I see that he was right. You are a bad sensei. With that, Sakura turned and stormed off. She did not look back, missing the stunned look of Kakashi. Present Sakura continued her trek, still pissed and frustrated. So pissed, she did not see the person until she ran into them. Oh, I'm so sorry, Sakura said, her mood quickly changing. She looked to see that she ran into Konoha's new resident, Haku. The feminine, yet handsome, teen gave her a disarming smile. It's quite alright. You seem to be in deep thought. Is something wrong? Haku asked. At first, Sakura was going to say that she was fine but then she thought about it. While a little intimidated due to the fact that they were enemies in the wave country, she needed to let out her frustrations. With a huff, she gave him a serious glance. Was Zabuza just as bad a sensei as mine? Sakura exclaimed. Haku blinked owlishly at the question. Kurinai watched as her students were training. Shino was meditating while Kiba and Hinata sparred. Kurinai was very proud of her team and thought that their strength could only get higher. It was one of the reasons she stopped mothering them. It turned out to be a wise decision. She turned her attention to the sound of Kiba grunting. He was on the ground, groaning after he got dropped on his butt. She smiled at the downed boy. What have we learned today? Kurinai asked. Just because I'm fast doesn't mean I'm unbeatable, Kiba said with a groan. 
Akamaru was chuckling at his master, earning him a dirty look. Hinata was concerned but a reassuring hand calmed her. That's when Kura and I heard the cry of a hawk. She looked up to see the bird circling. She turned her attention back to her team. Okay team, training is done for the day. You are all dismissed for the rest of the day. I will be busy and will not be in contact until tomorrow. Kura and I explained. Alright sensei, they all said. With that, Kura and I vanished. Asum also saw the hawk. He let out a stream of smoke. So, it's that time huh? He said to himself. He turned his attention back to his team who were finishing a mission. He could hear the baker praise Choji. If you ever need some extra cash, you can work for me. The baker said. Thanks for that and thanks for the recipe, Choji said and joined his team. Asuma walked up to them and smirked at their state. You guys look like you had fun. Well, one of you did, Asuma joked as Zeno was covered in flour. Shikamaru was as well but not as much. Anyway, I'll report the success of the mission. You guys can get cleaned up. He used the teleportation jutsu to leave. Ino was the second to leave, not even saying goodbye. Choji noticed that this was a theme with her lately. He wondered if she was angry about something. Shikamaru could care less about Ino's attitude. Since he told her what he thought about her, Ino had decided to ignore him and Choji. Choji tried to talk to her but she ignored him. Shikamaru thought that Ino was being childish and didn't care if she was angry. He told her the truth and if she couldn't handle it that was her problem. Shikamaru just turned and headed home after wishing Choji well. Kakashi arrived in the Hokaiye's office on time. Like every Jonin, he also saw the hawk. He dismissed his team, who were starting to get what he was saying. Well, Naruto and Sakura were starting to get it. They started to work together a bit more than they usual would. Granted, the two worked together only due to the fact that they agreed that he was a bad sensei. Naruto did not stop cheering and mocking him for at least five minutes. He only wished that their coming together was undue to the disrespect that they showed him. Another thing that he noticed about Sakura was that she was steadily improving her skills. Her accuracy and her taijutsu were crisper than he remembered. He put his thoughts in the back of his mind as the Hokage was taking nominations for the upcoming Chunin selection exams. It was a biannual exam that Janan could take to become Chunin. The Hidden Leaf Village was going to host it this time. Hiruzen had just finished taking three nominations. That's when Kura and I spoke up. I, Kura and I Yuhi, leader of Team 8, hereby nominate my team for the Chunin selection exam, she said confidently. I, Asuma Sarutobi, leader of Team 10, hereby nominate my team for the Chunin selection exam, he said nonchantantly. I, Kakashi Hitake, leader of Team 7, hereby nominate my team for the Chunin selection exam, he said lazily. It was his nomination that got a reaction. Lord Hokage, I must protest that nomination. A voice said. Everyone turned to see Iruka. Kakashi wasn't too concerned. He had a thought as to why he was against it and why he was signaled out. Are you talking about me or all of the rookie teams? Kakashi asked in his usual, aloof tone. I just mean you. While I have an issue with the rookies entering the exams, I trust Jonin Kurinai and Jonin assume a decision more than I do yours, Iruka said with an annoyed tone. I don't know what Naruto has told you during your meetings but I am confident that my team will pull through. Or it will break them, which overcomes first, Kakashi joked. You irresponsible bastard. Do you think that this is a joke? I know for a fact that only Sasuke and Naruto are trained well enough to take these exams. Despite what Haku was able to do with Sakura in one week, she is not ready, Iruka shouted at him. Kakashi's lone eye widened at that. What does Haku have to do with Sakura? Kakashi asked confused. Did you really think that her recent improvement was because of the scrolls that you gave her? She can only learn so much from them. How can she know that she learned if she doesn't apply it? Haku has been helping her with that under my supervision. Iruka explained. This actually angered Kakashi. You and Haku had no right to do that. Kakashi argued with a hard tone. How can you claim any right when you have focused all your attention on Sasuke? Don't Sakura and Naruto deserve the same respect that you give him? Are you telling me that the great copy ninja isn't skilled enough to train three Janan, the man with over a thousand jutsu? Iruka mocked. Kakashi did not enjoy being mocked by the instructor. He didn't like some of the looks that his fellow Jonin was giving him. He was about to put this Chunin in his place but Hiruzen interrupted. That's enough, both of you. While I understand your concern Iruka, it is their choice. If Kakashi wants his Kunoichi to meet a terrible faith, that is his decision. Perhaps his new Kunoichi will take up his time and he would respect her. Some of the Jonin snickered at the jabs at Kakashi. The masked ninja just stood there and took it. Either way, 
it is the decision of the Xinan if they want to participate. Hopefully, a sensible choice is made, Hiruzin said, looking dead at Kakashi. The nominations continued but Kakashi was not listening. He was very annoyed and he needed to talk to some people. There were some things that needed to be said. Naruto and Sakura watched as a teen in a black, baggy, full body suit with a red and yellow circle on the front, a black hood which covered his head completely and had cat like ears and his forehead protector on his forehead. Held Konohamaru by the scruff of his shirt. The teen was about to hit him, something that Naruto was not about to allow. He rushed forward to help his friend. The teen smiled at that and wiggled his fingers with his free hand. However, this was not the Naruto of old. Naruto vanished and reappeared in an instant behind the teen. The boy and the girl who was with him was surprised. Naruto launched a punch and the teen had to release Konohamaru to catch it. Naruto smirked before exploding into leaves. The teen was acting frantically, trying to get the leaves out of his view. When the whirlwind of leaves died down, he looked around to find both Naruto and Konohamaru gone. It was when he heard the little brat that he found the two back with the oink haired girl and his two friends. The teenage girl couldn't help but be impressed with what she just saw. The blonde haired girl, who had four ponytail, looked at the spiky haired Naruto. She did not know what he just did but she knew that it wasn't the teleportation jutsu. She knew of it and that was something else. On the plus side, her teammate was just made a fool of by someone he deemed useless. That's when she saw her teammate reach for the package on his back. Are you really going to use that? She asked. That punk needs to be taught a lesson. He snarled. Naruto turned back to face him and got ready for a fight. That's when a voice came out of nowhere. That's enough Konkuro. The great voice said. Everyone turned to where the voice came from, which was a tree that they were near. They saw Sasuke, who was just as shocked to find someone behind him. The young teen was wearing a black bodysuit with an open neck, t-shirt like sleeves, and almost full-length leggings. He also wore a white cloth over his right shoulder and the left side of his hips. He had a wide leather band from his left shoulder to his right hip with which carried a sand gourd and a round, which he had his forehead protector wrapped. Do not embarrass us any more than you have. Jigara, Konkuro muttered in fear, something that was not lost on Naruto. He turned to look at Gara, who was also looked at him. Naruto flinched at the look he saw in his eyes. It was one of madness. Seeing the fear in the eyes of his teammates, he knew that this new character was dangerous. He also felt something familiar with him. Naruto did not like the situation that they found themselves in. Haku looked over the children at the academy. He sighed when he did not find Konohamaru, Udon or Moegi among them. He would applaud the three for their escaping ability but he wished that they did not do it during his time watching. They were also going to miss the lesson that he was sure that they would enjoy. Well, it was their lost. He was about to get on with the lesson when someone appeared. Haku saw that it was Kakashi. He also saw that Kashi was not carrying himself with that same aloofness that he knew him for. In fact, he could see annoyance and a little anger in his lone eye. That's when Kakashi spoke. We need talk now. He ordered. Haku only steeled himself for what could happen. Haku and Kakashi stood away from the students. They were far enough not to be heard but not too far for Haku not to keep an eye on the students. Haku faced Kakashi and saw that he was not happy with him. He guessed what it might be about due to his talk with Naruto. The blonde, who he lived near, warned him that Kakashi might not be happy to know that he was helping Sakura. Haku didn't understand why he would but it looked like that Naruto was right. Haku was a little worried until he felt a worn session on his arm. It was the seal that was put on him, which let him know that his Anbu handler was close. It was placed on him after he worked out his deal with the Hokage. His guard was letting him know that he was close and assumed that he knew about Kakashi coming to confront him. Ignoring it for now. Haku turned his attention to Kakashi. So, what is it that you wish to talk about Kakashi-sensei? Haku asked. We can start by telling me who gave you permission to train my student? Did you not think that I should have been informed? Kakashi asked with a tone. I truly did not believe that it would have been an issue as I have only helped Sakura with her basics and with the scrolls that you gave her. As for permission, the Hokage gave it to me when I asked him. Due to my probation, I felt that it was the wise thing to do. He said it was all right for myself and Iruka to help her. Haku answered calmly. Kakashi's mood did not get better with that answer. It meant that the Hokage knew about the training and allowed Iruka to come at him. Kakashi turned away from Haku and vanished. Haku did not feel insulted and went back to the students. Hiruzen stamped another document when he heard a small commotion outside. His door was thrown open and it entered Kakashi. His receptionist was right behind him. I'm sorry sir, she began but Hiruzen held up his hand. It's all right. 
I've been expecting him, he said. The woman bowed and closed the door as she left. The two were looking at each other, one calm, one angry. It was Hiruzen who spoke first. I see you went to talk to Haku? You gave him and Iruka permission to train Sakura without my consent, Kakashi stated. I didn't believe that you cared. When Haku came to me, he explained the discussion he had with Sakura. It seems that she finally had enough of you telling her no. I happen to agree with Iruka that you can learn only so much from reviewing. You do not improve just by sticking your head inside some text or scroll. I gave Haku permission to only to improve her basics and apply what she learned from your scrolls, something you refused to do. Hiruzen explained I was only looking out for her. She just started to take her training serious and, Kakashi began. I'm going to stop you right there. The Hokage cut him off. She should not have gotten to this point. You should have dealt with her issues at the beginning. Perhaps, she would have contributed more during your mission. Sir, you know who I have, who I picked. You have read the evaluations. Kakashi argued. That is just another excuse. Yes, I have read the same evaluations but that does not mean we cater to Sasuke because he may betray the village one day. Should he betray the village in his quest for power and revenge, then he will be treated as anyone else who betrays the village, Hiruzen stated with a hard tone. So, you are just replacing me with others like Haku and Iruga? Kakashi asked with an edge. No, you have done that yourself. You are making the same mistake I did with my own team. The old man commented. It would never come to that, Kakashi said quickly. It already has. You just refuse to see it as it is. Kakashi could not speak after those words. He did not believe that his team could end up like the Sanin, where only one was loyal to the village. Kakashi recomposed himself and looked at Hiruzen. They will prove you wrong in the exams, he said. Hiruzen just looked at him before sighing. Very well, we will see. However, after the exams, Team 7 will no longer be under your command. But sir. No, Hiruzen shouted, silencing Kakashi. You have proven to be unable to lead the Hidden Leaf's future. I will not let it continue on. Kakashi looked at Hiruzen with his narrowed eye. It did not worry the old cage. I will fight you on this. I am not a bad teacher and I will keep my team, Kakashi stated. Do what you must Hatake. We're done here, Hiruzen said with a dismissive tone. Kakashi turned to leave. As he was halfway out the door, Hiruzen spoke again. Minato would have done the same thing and you know it. He nor your teammates would have accepted this. Kakashi paused for a moment before leaving. Hiruzen turned to his left and an Anbu appeared. Inform Naruto to be careful around both Kakashi and Sasuke. My guess, he will now help Sasuke gain his Sharingan. Hiruzen ordered. Yes sir. The female said and vanished. Hiruzen then called in his receptionist. Get me the files of every Jonin who has requested a team. He ordered. Sir, she said and left to get it done. Hiruzen went back to his work. Naruto was sitting at his favorite booth with a bowl of ramen in front of him. The only problem was that he was not devouring it. He ignored it and he seemed to be in very deep thought. Tenchi and Ayame were very worried and a little frightened. An observer watched and noticed that Naruto was being weird. They decided to do something about it. It came fast, it came hard and it pissed the blonde off. What the hell? Why did you hit me She-Hulk? Naruto exclaimed. You're scaring you friends stupid. She then hit him again. And that is for the She-Hulk comment. Naruto gave the stink eye to Sakura who just turned her nose up at him. Naruto turned around to his ramen and began eating. Ayame decided to ask a question. Is something the matter Naruto? You're not usually this deep in thought unless you're creating a jutsu or learning a new ceiling jutsu, she said. I'm just thinking about that gar guy. Naruto said. This got Sakura's attention. Why are you thinking about him? She asked. I saw his eyes. As some form of training, Iviki had me stare into the eyes of people to read their thoughts. In a way, I learned how to do that but now, I wish I hadn't, he said somberly. Sakura was curious about that. She noticed the tone and remembered the explosion Naruto had in the wave country. Could this have something to do with his life here in Konoha? What did you see Naruto? He's Lived a life similar to mine, Naruto said. Sakura watched the two ramen shop owners and saw that they shocked. It soon changed to recognition and sadness. Sakura started to wonder just how bad Naruto's life was. I saw the malice but under it I saw the loneliness, the pain. I can't help but wonder if I could have turned out that way. Naruto explained. Sakura was floored by that. She always thought that Naruto was a happy-go-lucky guy but he was full of insecurities just like everyone else. However, she did not like it. 
A San Bernardo just didn't look right. Look Naruto, I don't know how bad things were for you and I'm sorry if I was insensitive to it but you're not that Gara guy. Sure you were lonely in the beginning but then you found friends and you kind of found a family. That's the stuff you worked for, right? Sakura asked. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, Naruto said a little more confidently. I did find a family and I do have friends. Thanks Sakura for cheering me up. With that, Naruto began to inhale his ramen and asked for another bowl. The adults looked happy while Sakura looked disgusted at his eating habits. As the second bowl appeared, so did an Anbu ninja. Naruto Uzumaki, she started when she noticed Sakura. She thought for a while before making a decision. Sakura Haruno, I have a message from the Hokage. The two looked at each other and was curious as to what it was. Sasuke arrived at the training ground, very annoyed. He saw Kakashi who was staring at the memorial stone. The Janan walked up to him. What's the deal? Why did you bring me out here in the middle of the night? He demanded. Kakashi turned around to face him. As he looked at him, the Hokage's words rang in his head. He quickly banished them and focused on Sasuke. We are going to activate your Sharingan tonight. We are not leaving the training ground until we do, Kakashi said. Sasuke was shocked but it changed into a smirk. When do we begin? He asked. Kakashi revealed his Sharingan. Right now. Kurin I looked at her team who was looking at the forms. She could see that Kiba was excited, Hinata was a little nervous and Shino was Shino. She caught their attention with a cough. Again, this is completely voluntary. You can choose to participate or not. I believe that you all are ready to take the next step, Kurin I said. D do you really think so as sensei? Hinata asked. Yes, I do. All of you have grown from what you were? You three have really become true ninja, Kurin I said with a smile. I leave you three to discuss things. She vanished to leave them alone. Kiba looked to his teammates. So, what do you guys think? I'm excited about it, he said. I am also curious but I will step down if you are uncomfortable Hinata, Shino said. I I don't want to hold you guys back, Hinata said. You don't hold us back Hinata. You help out a lot with your first aid in taijutsu. If you don't think you're ready, then we can wait. We are a strong pack and the pack stays together, Kiba said. Shino nodded at that Hinata smiled at her friends and teammates. Oh okay, let's do it, Hinata said. Kiba cheered while Shino remained silent. Asuma just sighed as he looked at the scene in front of him. He had given them the forms and explained the Chunin exams. That when it all went south. Take the damn form Shikamaru, Ino shouted. Why should I? Shikamaru asked in a bored tone. Asuma said that it was voluntary and I'm volunteering to pass on it. It sounds troublesome. I don't care. We taking these exams and becoming Chunin, Ino shouted. Guys, we need to calm down and talk about this, Choji said, trying to be a peacekeeper. What is there to talk about? Don't you want to be Chunin? Ino argued loudly. Yeah but not right now. I don't believe that I'm ready for that responsibility yet. Choji answered. God, can't you think for yourself Choji? Stop following Shikamaru's lead, Ino shouted. Enough of your mouth, Shikamaru roared, stunning everyone. He glared right at into Ino, making her flinch. Enough of your put-downs and insults. Shikamaru took a breath and calmed down. Choji and I are making our own choices. Just accept it and move on. You are not the leader of this team and we don't have to follow your lead. Ino's anger returned and she glared at the two boys in front of her. You think so Nara? I'll show you. With that, Ino stormed off. Asuma sighed at the scene. He was reconsidering his decision to nominate his team. Naruto looked at the form then at Kakashi and finally at the form. He then let out a long sigh. The old man must hate me. He either hates me or is getting back at me for a prank. No way does he saddle us with a jonin so stupid, Naruto stated. That's rude Naruto. I'm sure that sensei is just joking about this, Sakura said and looked at Kakashi. That man did not answer the question and gave no expression. She turned back to Naruto. So, the Hokage is punishing us because of you. Thanks a lot Naruto. If we are done insulting me, Kakashi said. I still have a few words. Naruto muttered. Kakashi gave him a serious look, warning him to stop. As I was saying, you are to report to the academy, he said and began to leave. That's it? That's all you got to say? Asked Naruto. What do you want me to say Naruto? It doesn't matter what I say or explain, your opinion is not going to change. Like I said before, it is your choice if you want to participate. Kakashi explained. If you always act like the team that I know you could be, you wouldn't be questioning my decision. 
I question your decisions because you don't make any good ones. You are the sensei of this team. It is your responsibility to make sure that we are ready for the ninja world. You haven't done that. Why do you think I go to Aviki or Iruka or even Elder Homura? I wonder, was your sensei just as shitty as you or is this just how you are? Naruto argued. Kakashi was very upset with those words and narrowed his lone eye at the blonde. The blonde saw that he hit a nerve but he wasn't going to apologize. Be it the academy or not. It makes no difference to me, Kakashi stated and vanished. Sasuke took his leave as well. Sakura turned to Naruto. I think that you really pissed him off, she said. Yeah, well I don't care anymore. You heard what that masked Kunoichi told us last night? We can't trust him anymore. All that matters to him is helping Sasuke. He doesn't care about you or me, Naruto said. With a sigh, he walked off. Sakura also sighed and walked away to think about this decision. Naruto stood and watched the entrance of the academy. He was still on the fence about taking this exam. He spent yesterday thinking and talking to his friends who were ninja and adults. Iruka and Daviki thought that he was ready, so did Haku. Even if they thought that, he was ready to miss the exams just to stick it to Kakashi and Sasuke. So here he was, thinking of his decision. Naruto? The blonde turned to see who called him and was stunned. He had to squint his eyes just to make sure he wasn't seeing things. The person was nervous as Naruto scrutinized them. Sakura? Holy shit, did you cut your hair? Naruto exclaimed. Sakura did indeed cut her hair. It was now a little above her shoulders. Sakura was a little self-conscious about her choice. She only did this because Haku recommended that it would be an advantage. He also commented that she would look mature with shorter hair. That made her blush a little. Yeah, my mom helped me with it. W what do you think? She asked shyly. Well, it suits you honestly. You'll definitely get some looks. I hope Haku has helped you defend yourself. You're going to be beating the boys off with a stick. He answered jokingly. Sakura blushed a little as Naruto had a point. She was already getting some looks. I'll take the compliment, thank you, Sakura said with a deadpan tone. So are you still undecided? A little. While I would like nothing more than to go up in rank, I really want to stick it to Kakashi and Sasuke. I think that I'm ready but what about you? I know that you just recently starting improving, Naruto said. That's one of the reason that I wanted to stay home. Another reason is that I know that I'll be the one holding you and Sasuke back. However, I want to see just how far my training will bring me. It won't be much but I'm willing to see in this exam. Sakura explained. The two stood in silence for a while, looking at the academy. Naruto then looked at Sakura. I watch her back, you watch, mine and we both watch Sasuke's. Knowing that idiot, he's going to be the reason we're going to get in trouble, Naruto said, making Sakura giggle. Deal, Sakura said. The two made their way toward the academy. They reached the entrance and saw Sasuke. The Uchiha gave both a look before entering the academy. Sakura sighed, a little depressed that Sasuke did not say anything to her. While she still liked Sasuke a lot, she was starting to see his faults. She did not like what she saw. She and Naruto followed him inside. How stupid are you? Naruto asked Sasuke rudely. Sasuke turned back with a glare. Naruto was not affected by the look. The team walked up to the third floor where the room was. Sakura decided not to say anything because she agreed with Naruto. Sasuke ignored her advice about the Genjutsu and he ignored Naruto's warning about fighting Rock Lee. It was why he had bruises on his person. They finally reached the room where they saw Kakashi. The Jonin got off the wall to greet his team only to have Naruto walk right past him and enter the room. Kakashi called out to him but was ignored. Kakashi was not happy with Naruto but decided to focus on his other two students. He looked and noticed Sasuke's face. What happened? He asked. Sasuke decided to get in a warm-up match. It did not go his way. Sakura explained, earning a dirty look from Sasuke. Sakura ignored it and waited for Kakashi to talk. Well, I was going to tell you all to watch out for each other but it seems that your teammate doesn't wish to heed my advice, Kakashi said with a tone. Maybe it is because he doesn't trust you and sorry to say, I do not either, Sakura said and walked past him. Kakashi put his hand out to stop her. Whether you trust me or not, I am still your sensei, Kakashi said with a warning tone. This would usually get Sakura back in line but not this time. Honestly Captain. Kakashi recoiled a little at her tone. You can't call yourself my sensei if you haven't taught me anything. Also, Naruto and I aren't willing to listen to you anymore. If the Hokage is sending the Anbu to warn us against you, then we can't trust you, Sakura stated and walked into the room. Kakashi was now really upset. 
He looked at Sasuke and motioned him to follow. He watched him enter and the doors close. Kakashi was left to stew in his unhappiness. The room was packed with shinobi. Symbols of the hidden rain, hidden grass, hidden sand, hidden waterfall and hidden leaf were represented for this exam. In their corner, the rookies began to gather. Sasuke. Ino cheered and hopped on Sasuke's back. I'm so glad you're okay. I was so worried because you were on Forehead's team. Ino looked at Sakura with a smirk. She was surprised not only by her haircut but also by the fact that Sakura was ignoring her. It gave Sasuke time to escape. Naruto gave Choji and fist bump before giving his friends his attention. I thought for sure you two would pass on this. What happened? Naruto asked. Ino happened. She complained to her mothers only because we wouldn't bow down to her or follow her lead. Troublesome blonde, no offense, Shikamaru said. Naruto waved it off and he ignored Ino's dirty look. He then looked at Sakura and kept looking, making her nervous. You look less troublesome. Cute too. I like the haircut. Choji added. Thank you Choji. I guess, thank you to Shikamaru, Sakura said. Yeah, take it as a compliment. If Shikamaru thinks you're less troublesome, it a good thing. He not a got one of those before. Everyone turned to see Team Kurinai. Kiba gives his friends fist bumps before giving Sakura a look over. He gave her a whistle and two thumbs up. Love in the new do Sakura, rock in that haircut. You even look stronger. Sakura blushed a little at the compliment. The compliments toward Sakura, however, did not please Ino one bit. Sasuke didn't care at all but he did notice the looks that they were getting. He especially noticed the sand team. He narrowed his eyes at the redhead who sunk up on him. That's when the attention turned to another leaf ninja. He had onyx eyes and ash gray hair. He had on black rimmed, circular glasses. He wore a dark purple shirt with a high collar, a white undershirt and dark purple pants with a white cloth waistband. He was warning the rookies about the exam. How many times have you taken the exam? Sakura asked. This would be my seventh time. He answered. S so this test is R really tough? He not asked. The teen nodded at her. Yeah, they are tough. That's why I'm going to help you guys. He pulled out a stack of cards. Naruto noticed them immediately. Those are info cards. Iruka carries a stack too. What does yours contain Kabuto? He asked. Just information on the competition. I've gathered from every exam. I even have some basic stuff on the newcomers. I would have a bit more on you rookies but security is a bit stricter than before, Kabuto joked. This made a few of the rookies pause. Why would a Janan need such information? However, all questions would stop when Sasuke got in Kabuto's space. You said that you have information? He demanded. Yes but it is pretty basic. Kabuto repeated. What do you have on Garo of the Desert, Rock Lee? Sasuke paused and looked at Naruto with narrowed eyes. And Naruto Uzumaki? This made the blonde sigh in annoyance. What's the matter Uchiha? You couldn't get anything from your spying so you think there's something on his cards? How pathetic can you get? Naruto said. What's the matter Uzumaki? Afraid that I'll get all your secrets? Sasuke spat. What secrets? I got a pretty good idea what his card is going to say. It's going to say something about my skill in clone jutsus and my skill in sealing jutsu, Naruto stated. Well that was a really good guess, Kabuto said. Sasuke snatched the card away from Kabuto and looked at it. He snarled at the info. Tossing the card back at him, he gave him a demanding look. Kabuto just chuckled before pulling out the other two cards. Okay, here is the first card. Rock Lee, 14 years old. Been a Janan for a year and is under the leadership of my guy. His teammates are the top Kunoichi Tenten and Rookie of the Year Neji Hyudga. While he has no skill in Ninjutsu and Genjutsu, his Taijutsu is off the charts, Kabuto said. I can attest to that. Lee's really strong man and I haven't won yet, Kiba stated. Okay, the next card is Garo of the Sand Waterfall age 13. He is the son of the third Kaze Kage. He is under the leadership of Baki. His teammates are his siblings, Damari and Konkuro. He's quite strong as his record has only B and A rank missions. It seems he has never been hurt. Kabuto explained. The rookies were stunned by this. Shikamaru pulled his friends aside. That's not good. This Kara guy is dangerous, Naruto said. He isn't the only one, Shikamaru said. He gave a brief look at Kabuto. While getting basic information isn't anything special, information like a leader's children is something that is high-level stuff. This guy is hiding something. You think so? I'm not getting a read on him, Naruto said. That's when they heard a body drop. It was Kabuto and he was puking. 
standing in front of him, were three Jinan with a music note symbol. Put this down on your cards. The hidden sound with rule these exams. The mummy ninja stated. That's when an explosion occurred and smoke appeared. It cleared to reveal Iviki and an army of leaf ninja. There will be no more attacks. You three, back away or be removed. Iviki ordered. The three did back away from Kabuto. Iviki got everyone's attention before smirking. Welcome to the Chunin exams. I am the proctor of the first stage, Iviki Morino. Believe me, by the end of this stage, you all will not be the same. Everyone was a little worried by his words. Kakashi was sitting alone and while you couldn't tell by his mask and forehead protector, he was in very deep thought. Sakura's words did not sit well with him. Her comment about the Anbu really cemented the trust that he lost with the Hokage. Kakashi knew that favoring Sasuke but it did not mean that he did not care about Naruto or Sakura. Sasuke just had to be the priority because of his goals and ambitions. However, everyone seemed to disagree with him. Tsume didn't want him as Naruto's sensei. Iviki, Iruka and Haku undermined at his training of his team. The Hokage told him that his team would end up like his. It frustrated and angered him. When did he lose the trust? What could he do to get it back? His thoughts were interrupted by a loud voice. Eternal rival, how are you? A man exclaimed. He had a shiny bowl cut and thick eyebrows. He was wearing a green jumpsuit, orange stripped leg warmers and an open Jonin flak jacket. He was joined by Asuma and Kurinai. I'm not in the mood guy. Just leave me alone, Kakashi said. Guy deflated a little but he cheered right up. Asuma looked at Kakashi and grunted. So Pops is going ahead with your dismissal huh? Can't say that you didn't deserve it, he said. Kakashi looked at him. You knew about this? Kakashi asked. Are you really surprised Kakashi? You favored one student over the other two. Shikamaru might be my favorite student out of the group but I give all my students my time. Asuma explained. It is the same with my team. You really don't have the right to be angry with Iruka, Iviki or Haku because they are doing the job that you should be doing. Kurinai added. I made mistakes but I can fix them. I can get Sasuke to see that bonds are important. I can give Naruto and Sakura the time if others did not get in my way, Kakashi said. Asuma and Kurinai looked at each other before looking back at Kakashi. He could see that they did not believe that was possible. That's when Guy spoke up. I'm sorry eternal rival but that will not happen. If your team has not bonded by now, they will never be a team. It is why I did not take my students out of the village until that happened. While they still have their differences, they have each other's back, Guy said. You don't know that guy. My team will show that they have each other's back. Maybe then, people will just back off and let me run my team. Kakashi stated before walking off. Kurinai, Asuma and Guy just looked at the Jonin with worry. They all couldn't understand why he would not just accept the fact that this was no longer his team. It would be 45 minutes later for the Chunin hopefuls. Iviki's stage was a written test, with 9 questions and a 10th that would be given after the time. The questions were way too hard, something no Jinan would know. This freaked out a lot of Jinan. However, a few managed to cheat their way to the answers. A few were caught but most was careful to stay within Aviki's point system. Now, it was time for the tenth question and boy was it a question. It caused an uproar. You can't do that. A waterfall ninja exclaimed. Too bad. You have me as your proctor. It's my rules. You don't like it, then you're free to leave, Aviki said. This caused a few to actually get up and leave. Aviki waited a good ten minutes. After looking around and seeing that there was no one else, Aviki spoke again. Are the rest of you sure? Are you willing to be Jinan forever? Whether I'm Jinan or Chunin, I'm going to be Hokage. You ain't going to stop my dream, Naruto exclaimed. Iviki looked on as it seemed like his words calmed a lot of people down. He scoffed at his sometimes student and faced the room. Well then, congratulations. You all have passed the first stage, Iviki stated. Everyone looked at the man with shock. What? Everyone exclaimed. That's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on my other social media accounts. Ma God here, and I'm signing off.